Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill and welcome to my channel. If you're new uh, to the channel, uh, you might want to take a look at a video I prepared called uh, Astro Vagabond Channel Introduction Start Here. It'll help set your expectation about my channel. I'm a beginner. This channel is maybe geared more towards uh, beginners or people uh, doing some research uh, about possibly then jumping into deep sky object imaging. It'll set your expectation on the type of content. I make these videos to document my training progression, how I'm advancing along uh, my learning curve. And if other beginners or people that may be considering getting into uh, DSO uh, can get some insight from it, I, I think that's uh, helpful. Uh, but if you're a more experienced uh, imager, uh, please, uh, your comments are always welcome. Again, being a beginner, I may say things that are incorrect, and oftentimes the more experienced person can help course correct me and uh, put some comments into uh, the comments section that can help other people that may be viewing this uh, video as well. So this is going to be one of two videos, I think, around uh, uh, what is polar alignment and kind of how to. Um, right now, uh, I've been doing a manual polar alignment um, and that's going to be the focus of uh, this video uh, the polar finder android app that i found but i also want to call out that um, i received my pole master yesterday so i imagine i'll do one or two videos on the pole master as well uh, again focused on uh, polar alignment so um, you know, what is polar alignment? And it really just dawned on me uh, recently that really polar alignment is, um, I used to think it was about aligning to uh, Polaris, but really what we're trying to do is get our mount, our equatorial mount, properly aligned, what's called the right ascension axis, properly aligned with the north celestial pole and again this is geared towards the northern hemisphere we cannot see the north celestial pole but what we can observe is a star called polaris that's about one degree away from the north celestial pole sometimes you'll see an abbreviation ncp uh, that can aid us in getting our mount properly aligned with the north celestial pole and this alignment is important uh, because when uh, I do get to the point where I'm starting to acquire data, uh, I want good tracking. Uh, I, when I align on an object that I'm interested in imaging, I want that alignment to be a good alignment. And uh, so I need to pay attention on how to polar align. Now there's some other things that you can do called plate solving and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'll do in later videos because I'm just trying to, I'm just starting to explore those areas. But um, <clears throat> this uh, video is again focused on uh, Polar Finder, the app. And then um, after you view uh, the demo on the app, uh, I'm going to bring up Stellarium in an effort to show you what a proper uh, polar alignment might look like if you are observing Polaris over a 24-hour period relative to the uh, North Celestial, Celestial Pole. Hi, this is a demo of an app I found in the uh, Google Play Store for my Android phone called Polar Finder. Uh, I downloaded the app. The purpose I downloaded it was because uh, I understood it could help me do a proper polar alignment of my Skywatcher HEQ5 equatorial mount. Um, as you know, or you may be learning, it's important to properly align your mount with the North Celestial Pole. And since we can't really, we can't see the North Celestial Pole, uh, we use the star Polaris that's about one degree away from the North Celestial Pole and exhibits a certain behavior uh, when viewing it in relation to the North Celestial Pole. So I downloaded the app. I said, wow, it looks cool. 
I, I was looking at it. Uh, I saw some information down at the bottom, longitude, latitude, time of day. And I saw, uh, oh, great, there's Polaris. It's down around the 4 o'clock position. Um, let me go out uh, and try and align my amount using this uh, display. So I went and uh, spent some time out there getting Polaris aligned for the position it was showing for that time of day when I was trying to align my mount using my azimuth uh, controls and my uh, altitude controls. And I thought I had it aligned uh, and I was looking through my polar scope. This display here represents what you might see through your polar scope or you would see a similar type uh, display. And uh, I thought I had it aligned and um, I was continuing to watch. The earth was rotated, rotating and I noticed that Polaris was not rotating in the direction I expected it to rotate. And I said, okay, that's, that's interesting. Must be something I don't know. And then I gave a go to command with my hand controller for my mount to align on a particular object and the mount moved but it was nowhere near where the object was located that I wanted it to center on. So I said okay fail something's wrong I need to explore this. So the next day I decided to go into settings and I didn't go into settings before I use the app and I see, well, naked eye. Well, you know, the view that we get through our polar scope is different than the view that we get from our naked eye. So we'll go back here and we see that uh, Polaris is around the four hour, 27 minute mark in this view. If we change it to our telescopic view, we now see the position of Polaris is shown at 10 hours, 27 minutes. So I did not take into a, an account how things, when I look through my polar scope, are actually inverted. So now having the right view, I went out on another night and I did an alignment using this uh, app and I was able to properly align uh, Polaris relative to where this display said it should be and then I watched it for a period of time off and on to make sure it was rotating, moving in the direction I expected it to move and that it appeared to keep the same distance away from the North Celestial Pole, um, uh, which it did. So I said, okay, I think I've got a, a reasonable alignment, but the clouds had moved in by that point in time, so I was not able to issue a a go to command to see if the mount actually landed on the object I wanted it to land. Then in today, getting ready for this demo, I went back into settings and something else I noticed was reticule type and built in. I hadn't previously noticed that. So I selected the built in option and now I see a bunch of mount manufacturers listed there. One of them being my mount the Skywatcher. So I selected Skywatcher and then the view I got is more representative of what I see when I look through my polar scope on my Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro <clears throat> except my uh, view has three circles and then there's some information relative to date ranges that tells me based upon the year it is which of the three circles I should align uh, Polaris with. But again, what you see there is NCP, the North Celestial Pole, and you see the position of Polaris. And um, again, uh, in the paren down there, it shows that it's at the 10 hour, uh, 25 minute mark. So this app is a good app as far as I'm concerned. It enabled me to get a uh, proper alignment, I believe. Since I haven't started tracking and acquiring data, the proof will be in the, uh, in the images as I go for longer exposures. Do I get any star, uh, star trailing and 
but that stuff I'll talk about in another video. I just wanted to uh, give a little highlight to this Polar Finder app if you're an Android user. Uh, it might be an app you uh, consider uh, taking a look at that might aid you in the process of doing a polar alignment. And uh, also, uh, now, I understand we're, we're really not aligning our scope to Polaris as much as we are aligning the right ascension access of our mount to the North Celestial Pole. But since we can't see it, we use Polaris as the star to aid us in the process. And so we focus on aligning that relative to, uh, to the uh, circles that are, are on our mount. So anyway, a uh, great little app and it was free. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, it's a free app, um, and it really was helpful to me. Um, I'm excited to see what the Pole Master is going to do. So I was thinking, you know, how can I uh, demonstrate what a perfect alignment might look like? So uh, I dug into Stellarium and thought I would uh, see if I can use that uh, to help us. So here's a, you know, a view of Polaris uh, in Stellarium. It's the white rotating uh, disc. And then where those lines, lines converge towards the center screen, uh, we'll call that the North Celestial Pole. And the great thing about uh, Stellarium is you can, you can time travel. So what I'm going to do, uh, I think this would be uh, if it was, uh, I don't know, about five or six p.m. at night, um, but it's dark out, but I'm going to start uh, Polaris rotating. And again, envision that outer ring as a ring that you might see in your reticule, only, um, you know, in your alignment process, Polaris would probably be sitting on one of the circles that you have in your uh, polar scope. So, okay, so let's get Polaris moving now to simulate the Earth's rotation. So now we're starting to see it move. We're going to move it faster. And what we're looking for here is we're looking to see if Polaris maintains the same distance as it rotates around the North Celestial Pole. And you'll see that it does. So we're going to go a little quicker here. So again, in my Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, the reticles that I have has three circles. Again, there's some information in my reticule that tells me for the, the year range which circle it's supposed to be on. But if I get a good alignment, then Polaris should transit one of those circles, uh, hopefully perfectly, and to the extent it does uh, is, uh, I believe, uh, a statement about the quality of my alignment. So anyway, I hope this uh, video was helpful. If you enjoy this type of content or it's helpful, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I welcome new subscribers. What really drives the channel are comments and questions. Uh, so please feel free to add your comments, ask your questions. And if you have, uh, and if you're more experienced and have some information you can share, uh, by all means, please, uh, please put it in the comments. Other than that, uh, thank you for dropping in on the channel, and until next time.